Biscayne Falls. Biscayne Falls. Father Justin, I'm Father Guarini. Oh, thank you. The Monsignor's expecting you. If it's at all possible, I would like to see Father Rossetti first. He won't recognize you. He's here in the Vatican? Oh, yes, we keep him very comfortable. He mumbles. I can't make out what he's saying, though. And what did the doctors tell us? They found him like this at the accident site. Something inside his head must have snapped. He may have caused the accident, but we'll never know. His windows were shattered, there was a fire. Two motorcycles were found, but no drivers. Thank you. You were his assistant for some time? For three years, yes. He was also my friend. Strange that with all the great events of my life, nothing conjures up feelings in me more than the lost aromas from my childhood. <laughs> when you are old, you fix most on what you will miss. Sad but true, I will miss espresso rather than Puccini. Do you know what Father Rossetti was doing in Pennsylvania, Father Justin? No. I asked once. You only asked Father Rossetti once. You are aware of the confirmation of the sacrament? A holy investigative body. Yes, Monsignor, I'm aware of it. Over 70 years ago, a controversial message was left at Villa Fontina, Italy, by our blessed lady. I was just a child. As sole survivor, I was given the task of protecting the message until it was time. You are here because that time has come. 
to be opened at the beginning of the last decade of this century. Please read the contents. A virgin birth? Our blessed lady has promised the world a divine child in our age. Then Father Rossetti was investigating this birth when... Uh, when he fell ill. It is dangerous work. It speaks of a great danger. You know what you're up against. This event must be investigated. This virgin birth in Pennsylvania could cause the church great embarrassment. Destroy credibility if she is not the promise of the Virgin. I understand. As holy investigator of the confirmation of the sacrament, Father Rossetti was given full authority to investigate the authenticity of this particular event. Utmost secrecy is essential. The event has global significance. Father Guarini will brief you. I will coordinate your efforts and act as liaison. You'll report everything back to me. As you wish, Father. Siamo in fretta! Moviti! Moviti! Abbiamo promesso all'aeroporto! Ma abbandoniamo qui. Tell me, Father, what can I expect? What hell did Father Rossetti go through? Father Rossetti was spared. If you can call Jiffin mad being spared, it's all in there. You will feel a physical decaying of your body, your mind, a loss of free will. Expect temptations of the flesh, which will distort your vision corrupt the truth. I'd rather be playing ice hockey blindfolded. It would be less dangerous. You will find that you have no free choices left. No freedom of thought, no freedom of action. You will be part of his darkness. Sister Catherine Dominica. This term, Margaret Gallagher, has been doing her studies at home. The other students, especially the parents, they haven't been kind about this unusual pregnancy. Neither were we so charitable at first, Father. The sisters here at Holy Trinity, myself included. I'm originally from a very small town, sister. Not unlike Briscane Falls. I think I know what has happened here so far. Margaret has been at the top of her class. Well-liked, but never fully accepted by most of her schoolmates. She was appreciated best by the sisters who perhaps saw an image of themselves in the girl. Quiet, reflective. This is Father Justin. Hello, Father. Hello, Margaret. Thank you for agreeing to talk with me. Well, I'll leave you then. Thank you, sister. Please, Margaret, sit. Your friend first, in 
and your priest second. From both, you should expect trust. And I can guarantee you that. May I expect the same from you? Yes, Father. Good. Now, what is exchanged between us will be kept confidential. It's for your protection and the protection of the church that there be no press. Good. I know how difficult this has been for you, but at least it's, it's contained. The press would make an untidy meal of the both of us, and the church would ultimately suffer the indigestion. You'll be out there with them again soon. No. I can never be one of them again. Because of what they're saying? They call me names. It hurts because it's a lie. <sighs> What's this one here? That's Rosemary, and that's Thyme, and this is Sage. I grow fresh vegetables out in the back. It helps with expenses. We live on a pension since my father died. And so we've taken in boarders, mostly older people who don't have a lot of money. How do they treat you? Well, they're nice. Has your condition caused any unpleasantness? Well, at first there were the looks and suspicions, but they never said anything. I've done nothing wrong, Father. I take care of my mother. I take care of the boarders. You're a good girl, Margaret. People are basically good, I think. <laughs> Margaret, would you get me some more tea, please, dear? Sure. Father. Oh, uh, no, thank you. Father, Briskane Falls is a mill town, a very tough town, and they're not kind to my daughter here. Still, she never complains. I believe my daughter. I feel she's been touched by God. Please help her, Father. She's so young. I'll do what I can for her. No boy here ever touched her. If you ask me, that's why they've been causing so much trouble. Here's your apples, Father. Must have been a boy from the city or another town. Two bucks. She's never even been to the city. She's never even been out of Briscane Falls. Well, someone got her pregnant. You're not from around here, are you, Father? If I was from around here, you would know it, wouldn't you? Well, I hope you didn't have to come a long way just to talk to some girl who got herself knocked up. I came looking for the truth. Um, Josh. Josh? You have a good day. Send to your father. Margaret had been messing around, we'd know. So what are you saying? You, you think she's still a virgin? You think there's something to this? I mean, why else would the church send someone like him here? I don't know. My prayers are with this young girl, Margaret Gallagher. There are definite signs of the promise of the Virgin here. The girl speaks calmly of visitations and great miracles. However, being a natural skeptic, I am not easily convinced. It could be a very good performance. Just what exactly is the church looking for? The truth. I thought you guys had that down pat. The search goes on as long as there's a fresh mystery to unravel. 
You say mystery, but what you really mean is miracle. Ah, uh, but at the heart of a mystery might be a miracle. Or just another mystery. Never could accuse you guys of not having the right words. God forbid you ever do find the truth. You could be out of a job. We both might be out of a job. Catherine, would you check his blood pressure, please? Yeah, well, please, have a seat. That's a subject that might be worth kicking around over a few drinks at Hennessy some night. What do you say, Father? Are you up to having drinks with an agnostic? Up to it. How about if I buy the first round? I warn you, it could be a long night. I believe in mysteries, but I don't believe in miracles. I understand you look after most of the old folks at the Gallagher boarding home. Somebody has to. Margaret Gallagher's mother gave you permission to talk to me. Yes. How do you account for Margaret's pregnancy? Margaret Gallagher is intact. That's what you mean. Could pregnancy be caused by semen carried by any other means? Possible, but unlikely. So it is possible. Not in her case. I ran several tests on Margaret's vaginal tissue. It was completely undisturbed. I'll put it for you more bluntly. The girl has never even masturbated. Then what is your professional opinion? Margaret Gallagher is a virgin. And she's also pregnant. I know who these boys are, Father. They're from St. Bartholomew. We'll get them to repaint the doors. And then I'd like to speak with them. I can arrange that. Good. Margaret. <laughs> Careful. Easy to get knocked down as it is to get knocked up. <laughs> Jenny, why do you let them do this? I thought we were friends. We were until you started playing Virgin on the Mount. I don't have time for this. <laughs> well, what do you have time for? As if we don't know. You're gonna show them how tough you are, Michael? Okay. We confess. The kid is mine. Whoa! <laughs> hey, Mikey, kiss her. Go for it. Stop it! <laughs> hey, Michael, Mikey, you like it? Stop it, leave me alone! <laughs> Quit it, Michael! So hard <laughs> Stop it, Jenny! Uh, <laughs> Go for it, Mike. Stop it, Michael! Let's get it. <laughs> what? Like she might be a little bit too much for you, Mikey. Shut up! Come on, let's get out of here. What was she doing to my eyes? Did you see that? Father Justin? You two are excused. Pity the poor girl who shows them no interest. You think that's what happened? After talking to them, I can tell you that no one touched that girl, and they couldn't name anyone who had. But they did admit spreading the rumor. Father, we just got a call from the hospital. One of the boys, the ringleader, Michael Sheedy, mm -hmm. is in the hospital. What happened? They're not sure. Some freak accident. He lost an eye.
She's in and out. She's been asking for you. Um, what about the child? Who do you care most about, Father? <laughs> Theological sparring is uh, inappropriate right now. She fainted in the chapel at Holy Trinity. Who found her? We don't know. Is there someone at Holy Trinity? A man. Who? He wouldn't give his name. Well, has she... Has she been interfered with in any way? No. She hasn't been molested. Your miracle is unblemished. You don't understand, Dr. Tuckner. I'm concerned about a life here. Two lives, not a potential holy relic. And since you know what I'm here for, your personal prejudice will turn everything I say into ammunition against me and the church. What I think or what I say shouldn't matter to you one damn. I think it's time for that drink at Hennessy's. OK. I'll meet you in. 15 minutes in the lobby. Deal. Hello. Hi. You gave us quite a scare. The baby. It's fine. Margaret, you want to tell me what happened? I knelt to pray. I felt the baby kick. And I got sick and laid down. And then? There was someone in the chapel. He stood over me. Did you get a look at his face? No. He was all in black against the light. I was so scared. It's all right. It's all right. Did he say anything? No, nothing. But I saw things. Terrible things. People were dying. It was like a vision, Father. Here's a little light reading for you. Polio Venice? What exactly is polio Venice? It's an infection of the central nervous system. It seems to combine the symptoms of both polio and multiple sclerosis. The patient develops it suddenly, and it's usually fatal. That's the kind of mystery I'm interested in. Our mysteries may not be unrelated. If it's a virgin birth, you call it a miracle. If it's a new epidemic, you call it the devil's work. Everything has this theological significance. Don't you guys ever let accidents happen? Nope. Huh. You'll be going home tomorrow. And so will I. Will you come and see me when it's time? Yes. I spoke with Dr. Tuckner. Now, if there's anything you need, or if anyone causes you any problems at all, you go to him. Okay? Josh? Yes, it is. We have a drink with me, Father. No, I can't. 
I have to go back to my room and pack. Good night to your father. Good night. This one is sealed. The first one was open. The promise of the Virgin was opened by Father Rossetti. The prophecy and warning of the Virgin is to be opened only at the verification of a virgin birth. We feel you have established that with Margaret Gallagher. Two virgin mothers, both so pure and good. One carrying the seed of hope, the other carrying the seed of despair. The angel of darkness has many tricks up his sleeve. A crippling pestilence sweeps through the land of celebration, the dark morning of the birth of the Antichrist. The girl in Pennsylvania is innocent. The girl is not evil. The seed she carries is, but which one? Another virgin has been located. Yes, in Boston. You will conduct your investigation again for the confirmation of the sacrament. Same rules of secrecy apply. And if she carries the Antichrist? Well, that decision, by the grace of God, will not be yours to make. God be with you, Father. Has he said anything? No, not a word. It's time to go, Father. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, Father. Yes? Uh, this time, you'll be working with someone in Boston. Who? Someone appointed from the New York Archdiocese. Very good. You'll find Sister Anne has impeccable references. For the last several years, she has been working with troubled girls at St. Anthony's. And the girls were inconsolable when we told them we'd reassigned her. Well, Father Martin, I'm sure Sister Anne wouldn't be here if she weren't a very special person. If there's anything you want or need, Sister, just ask. We want you to be entirely comfortable during your stay. Oh, I'm sure I will. It's lovely here. Yeah, thank you. Sister Anne. This is our daughter, Kathleen. Hello, Kathleen. Hello, Sister Anne. Oh, hey, so she look, she Sister, looks just like what this I... is an investigation. Now, I hope you won't let your imagination substitute for analysis. Of course not. I'll be anxiously awaiting to hear from you. I would start with the day early in January. Perhaps you could find a way to get Kathleen to tell you about it. There was a boy from town, school prom, and some, some hateful gossip. Oh, Father Justin will be joining you in the investigation. You, you met him? We met once. He was a caseworker for Catholic Charities in New York when I was with the Dominicans. Well, he files his reports directly to Rome. You file your reports with us first before it goes to Rome. Goodbye. Goodbye, Father. I can't tell you about him. I can't tell anybody about that night. It would be so much easier if you could. 
Keeping this a private affair is almost impossible. People going around asking a lot of embarrassing questions. I can't, sister. And I wish that you wouldn't start anything. Tell you what. I won't ask about the boy, and I promise I'll keep the questions to a minimum. I'm so afraid. I just don't think anybody's going to be able to understand. I need your help, sister. Sister Anne McBain? You remember me, sister? Of course. Father Justin O'Carroll. This is Kathleen Bevier. Hello, Kathleen. Hi. Are you staying here at the house, Father? No, at the rectory at St. Jude's. Have you met the Beviers? Yes. They told me where to find you. I hope we can be friends, Kathleen. I can be a huge pain in the neck, but I'm really quite a harmless bureaucrat. You don't look like a bureaucrat, Father. <laughs> well, I'm more like a, like a cop, a church cop, just trying to get some facts straight. Margaret? Find out if you have everything you need. Yes, I do, thank you. I thought I'd take a bath. Kathleen! What's wrong? Oh, sweetheart. I will uh, bring you some fresh towel. That would be nice, thank you. Okay. 
Margaret, do you want to tell me what happened out there? I heard a voice coming from the shed. I went out to see what it was. There was no one there. I went inside and the door slammed shut. Those birds came from nowhere. I couldn't get away from them. Dr. Tuckner, why is this happening? I don't know. But your baby is fine. We have with us today distinguished religionist Dr. Leo Peters and professor of anthropology Dr. Hobart Seville. Gentlemen, this great locust and insect problem all through the central part of Africa is the latest in a series of disasters which cover the globe. Each country is experiencing some form of unusual emergency. There is great turmoil, great confusion, and suffering. Dr. Seville? Since the beginning of time, we've had disasters, some man-made, others part of the process of natural evolution. Yet from the polio Venice epidemic to the endless rains in some part of the world, these occurrences are like spot fires. Never before in history have they all come together at the same time. Would you define this as the apocalypse? I would say it's hard to have a consensus with all the different religious texts, beliefs, translations, and abridgments. Yet one religionist has called this an apocalyptic time, Dr. Seville. Why is it every time the earth erupts? OK, what shall we play? This one. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Mm -hmm. Set. Go. Sorry. Thank you, Ida. How long has she been with your family? As long as I can remember. Kathleen. You do understand why the church sent Father Justin to me, don't you? Yes. We don't want to intimidate you or intrude on your life any more than we have to. We need to verify your condition. We've talked to your friends, and, and the one issue that keeps surfacing is this incident at the prom. It's making it very difficult to get to the truth while avoiding that whole question. I can't. I just can't. How's our girl? I saw things, Father. Horrible things. Like in a dream, but they were so real. Why is this happening to me? We don't know, Kathleen. But we're here to help.
down, man. <laughs> <laughs> What is it, Ida? Can I speak to you, please? Certainly. I've seen things. A terrible fire rage, the flames. And what is all In her mirror. Like? Yes, it was there. I saw it. She saw it too. You mean Kathleen? Yes, my Kathleen. A priest from Rome. He knows the truth. She's not one of gods. Ida. Sister Anne. Father, I am wasting my time trying to conduct an investigation with only some of the facts. Ida says that she spoke to you and that you know that Kathleen is not, and I quote, one of God's own. Now, what on earth does that mean? Well, why would she say a thing like that? I don't know. She's saying things. She said she saw a terrible fire raging and a vision of hell, and that Kathleen saw it too. Maybe she's just trying to implicate the girl. There's something that you're not telling me. I have a right to know what's going on here. You're aware of the miracle of Villa Fontina? Yes, but the contents are sealed. Not anymore. All I can... All I know is that there will be two virgin births. What? Both girls, both 15. One will be carrying the child of light, and the other one will be carrying the child of darkness. Christ reborn? And the Antichrist. Where's the other girl? In Pennsylvania. We've determined that she's indeed a virgin. That's why we need to find out from Kathleen who the boy is who was with her that night. 
But I mean, even her parents don't know. And every every kid that I've talked to says she's a wonderful girl. There's many reports from those I've spoken to, too. Scattered rumors about Kathleen and the boy, but nobody's making an issue out of it. Except us. We must find out before the child is born. I know it's unfair, but it must be done, and it must be done quickly. Is there anything else that I should know? I think I'm being watched. We'll talk later. There's something I haven't told you. That time when I fainted in the woods, mm -hmm. there was a man watching me. Did you recognize him? No, I couldn't see him that clearly. Maybe it was one of the groundsmen. Maybe. Could it have been the boy? No, John's very fair. This guy was very dark. I promised there wasn't a trap. I know. I might as well tell you anyway. His name's John L. Jordan. He's a senior at St. Vincent High School. Kathleen, I won't tackle him and twist the truth out of him, okay? I don't think there's any other way. Well, then I'll do it discreetly. Maybe cause a riot first, then take him down just as the cops arrive. <laughs> Both of us or one of us? It would be less intimidating if you do it. Coward. All right, if you don't have any luck, I'll try. Come on, boy, come inside. Come on. Winston, what's wrong? Come on, Winston. Excuse me, John L. Jordan. Yeah, that's right. I was wondering if you wouldn't mind if I spoke to you for a moment. All right, you got my attention. What's up, sister? I understand you went out with Kathleen Bevier. I knew this was coming. Okay. I went out with Kathleen Bevier once, one official date. Plus a couple of trips to get something to eat after school. How come it was only one date? Can't spread it around too thin. Just be straight with me, okay? Shoot. Will you tell me exactly what happened? I know that you took Kathleen to a formal dance. Please, I need to know what happened afterwards. What'd Kathleen tell you? Nothing. She didn't even want to give me your name. I'm not surprised. What happened? We made it the night of the big school dance. Kathy Bavier was like a dead fish. I'll admit it. But that doesn't make her a rape victim. Nobody's mentioned rape. Then what's the big deal? 
The BVA's gonna fail to make some big marriage score if they can't palm her off as a virgin. She is a virgin. Well, she ought to bottle and sell her miracle then, because she's got something that's worth more than gold. Why are you being so ugly about all this? Why are you speaking about her as though she were trash? Because you're all trying to make me a liar. What I want to know is why is the church involved in this? The BVA is trying to get some special forgiveness from the Pope? Their daughter's reputation has been tarnished. You can't blame them for wanting to find out the truth. I have a reputation, too. Yes, I know that's important to you. I know what you mean by that, sister. Big stud and all that. But that's not what I'm talking about. I don't like being called a liar. I think we've gone about as far with this as we can. Thank you. There's something else going on here, isn't there? We started out with a question here, and now we've ended with one. What happened that night wasn't my imagination. Thank you for your help. According to him, it all happened. Trust me, Father, he's not telling the truth. Hi. Hi. Are you all right? Yeah. These are cute. Do you make them? Uh-huh. Sister, why is this happening? I grew up with that dog. Why would he turn on me? I don't know, Kathleen. There are a lot of things happening that we don't understand. You know, Mom and Dad told me not to ask questions. They said there are certain holy mysteries that must be investigated. They asked me to cooperate. I think under the circumstances, it's probably good advice. You know, when you gave me John L. Jordan's name, I promised that I would only speak to him. And I did. I went to the school. And he said we had intercourse. He says that because he thinks that's what people expect from him. Did he try to have intercourse with you? Yes. Did you fight him? Yes, but he's bigger than I am. What are you saying? Well, that he could have if he wanted to. I mean, I wouldn't have wanted him to, but he could have hurt me, so I didn't fight him. How far did he get? He couldn't do it. He couldn't. And he, he'd slap me and called me names. You know, he's been telling everyone that he had intercourse with you. Why didn't you defend yourself with the truth? Because I don't have to defend myself. Some will believe me, some will believe him. It just didn't seem important. I know everything's gonna be all right. It's just a feeling I have.
Hello, Doctor. Hi. How are you feeling? Fine. Why am I in a private room? Oh, I arranged it. I thought it would be a good idea. How much longer do I have to stay here? Just a few days. I also arranged for a nurse to stay with your mother for those few days. So you just relax. Try and get some rest, okay? Sister Anne, you all right? I'm fine. Just a little tired. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there something I can get you? I said I'm fine. Sorry, just being tired makes me a little edgy. <laughs> Sister Anne? Sister? I'm going to the art center with Father Jester. Would you like to go? I need some time to myself. Oh, come on, sister. I said I need some time alone. It's just that I didn't want them thinking I couldn't. So I lied and said I had. The funny thing is, after all the lying, I don't think many people believe me. When Kathy got pregnant, well, I thought I had it made. At least people wouldn't hint at things about me. So all this was about proving yourself? I didn't think it would get this far. I didn't get her pregnant, Father. But somebody did. 
I just wanted to take the credit. In fact, I'm so enjoying the entertainment. I love watching people make fools of themselves. I don't understand what you mean. Oh, it's quite embarrassing, really. I mean, you being pregnant and all, and Father Justin being a priest. I mean, what could you be thinking? Pawing him, pretending to be so pure when we both know who you are and what you are. How could you say that to me? I thought you were my friend. Oh, your evil web doesn't work with me. You're the devil's whore. Father Guarini, this is Father Millsap. I have Sister Anne's latest reports here in front of me, which I'm sending to you. As you know, her first report was comprehensive, was, was legible, but subsequent reports have been increasingly less academic, tending almost to, to innuendo. And the handwriting is a, is a scrawl. Well, this one is full of obscenities of, of fantasies. I, I'm afraid we have a situation here, Father. Well, it, 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 it's manifested itself in a sort of a, a, a passion. She's fallen in love, if, if you can call it that, with Father Justin. She brought evil with her into this house. You mustn't blame her. It's part of the risk of what we're doing here. Sister Anne is a vulnerable and loving person. She would necessarily be the one he would target. That's the way he works. He distorts. He creates havoc so they will never get to the truth. If you'll excuse me, I'll call Father Millsap and see what he'd like us to do. Thank you, Father. It'll be all right. They'll take good care of you. Pick up your feet! 
What? You got dropsy, Jordan? What the hell is the matter with you? Come on, come on, man up there. Johnny? Yes. Everything hurts. Like Charlie horses all over my body. Just rest. I'll stay with you. Am I gonna die, Father? Just rest. Somebody go give the coach a hand, huh? No, no. Thank you for calling. Yes. Bye-bye. That was Dr. Becker. John L. Jordan's in the hospital with polio venous. Oh, my. How bad is it? He's not expected to make it. Father Justin heard his final confession right there in the hospital. I saw the boy with his father just last week. It was me. I did it to him. I'm responsible. Oh, Kathy, don't say that you had nothing to do with it. He has that awful virus. Honey, was Johnny the boy that... No, Dad. He said he was. There wasn't anyone. My gosh, Bob Jordan's kid. Why would he say such a thing? Oh, George, it doesn't matter now. Cliffs. 
you stupid old man. I cast thee out, thou vile spirit, along with the entire embodiment of the wicked enemy and every phantom and diabolical region. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, depart and flee this creature of God. Never! Tremble, thou enemy of the faith and foe of the human race. Thou art the carrier of death and the thief of life. It is God himself who commands thee. The majesty of Christ commands thee. This is the beast, Father. You cannot fight him. The majesty of Christ commands thee. God the Father commands thee. God the Son commands thee. Satan will not let be born this child of light. God the Father commands thee. God the Son commands thee. Yield to God, who condemned by him, thou art expelled, and he whips thee with a divine scourge, before whose sight, Father, tremble and cry out. By him, thou art expelled. Please, Father. Who hath prepared an unending hell for thee, and thine angels, ah! from whose mouth shall come forth a pointed sword. Look for the eclipse! The dark morning! You cannot stop the birth! Satan! We'll have a storm! Oh. It's a girl, Kathleen. Who shall come to judge the living and the dead and the world by fire? Oh, Father. You heard what happened? Well, I spoke with the Monsignor. He said Father Justin was dead, and you would explain. I hope I'm not too late. Why? Because a girl in Boston has just given birth to the child of light, a perfect birth, delivered by the Virgin's own mother. Look, Father, I think you should get one thing straight. Margaret Gallagher is my patient. I'm only interested in her welfare. Her welfare is why I'm here. She's gone. Come with me. My patient, Margaret Gallagher. She's not in her room. She was just discharged. What? Someone came from St. Mary's. She was transferred. Transferred by who? Sister Anne McBain. This is what Father Justin was using her for. Sister Anne, she never returned to the Archdiocese. How long ago did they leave? About 30 minutes ago. We have to find her. Margaret's in great danger. Hush! <laughs> How'd you know it was tainted? Because I also heard the boy's confession in his local parish. What Father Justin reported to Rome was a lie. You have to push harder. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> there. Good. When did you first suspect? When I was almost killed in that accident. As my aide, he was the only one who knew I was taking an earlier train. His assassins were waiting for me. Stop. 
stop. Stop? What? Look, down there. If she's hurt that girl, I'll kill her myself. The girl means nothing to her. It's the child that counts. His eyes weren't human. He's born. The child of darkness is born. Margaret, where is the baby? <laughs> she took it. I'll fly down a car. You go get her. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see her. She just walked out into the street. 